Well, we're continuing our study of the Messianic Kingdom and the fulfillment of Old Testament prophecies in the appearance and coming of Jesus, the promised Messiah of Israel. We began this week with Jesus' statement at the very beginning of his public ministry, saying that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, we know from Scripture that the Old Testament prophets prophesied of the coming of Messiah and the kingdom that he would introduce, the new covenant. Now, there are numerous prophecies regarding the nature of the coming kingdom, but the most significant messianic prophecy regarding both the nature and the timing of the coming of the messianic kingdom is found in Daniel chapter 9. And if we look at the text of Daniel chapter 9, coordinate it with other biblical texts, and the historical record, it is a perfect prophetic revelation of the coming of Messiah and his kingdom. We're going to begin by looking at Daniel chapter 9, and we're going to spend several days in this passage. The chapter begins with Daniel's understanding that the Babylonian captivity would last 70 years, and he received that understanding in his study of the prophecy of Jeremiah. Now, Daniel was a young boy when he was taken captive. He and his contemporaries were taken captive, taken to Babylon. The city of Jerusalem was conquered by Nebuchadnezzar in 605 BC, and the first wave of captives were taken to Babylon, which included Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar then put a puppet king in place who later betrayed him and entered into an alliance with the Egyptians and in 486, the Babylonian army came back and destroyed the city of Jerusalem and the temple. Now, as an elder man, Daniel understands that it was the Lord's judgment on Judah for their rebellion to him and his ways. So Daniel chapter 9 opens with Daniel's brokenhearted prayer and his confession of the sins of his people. Now, I encourage you to go back and read the entire chapter of Daniel chapter 9, but for the sake of time, we're going to look at a few of those verses. In verse 5, Daniel prays the Lord, We have sinned, committed iniquity, acted wickedly, and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. And over and over, Daniel states the open shame that is borne by his people for their rebellion against God, and that this judgment came upon them in fulfillment of the words of Moses. He says in verse 11, The curse has been poured out on us, along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, for we have sinned against him. And he cries out to the Lord for forgiveness for the sins of his people and for the Lord to turn away his wrath from them. In verse 16, he says, O Lord, in accordance with your righteous acts, let now your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, for because of our sins and the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all those around us. And then in verse 19, he says, O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and take action for your own sake. O oh my God, do not delay, because your city and your people are called by your name. And it's at the conclusion of this prayer and his crying out to the Lord that the angel Gabriel appears to him and brings the revelation to Daniel and this critical prophetic timeline. And we're going to read beginning at Daniel 9 verses 24 through 27. 70 weeks or 70 sevens have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy place. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree 
to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then, after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be war. Desolations are determined. And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate even a complete destruction, one that is decreed, is poured out on the one who makes desolate. Now let's begin with the timing of the prophecy. The message from Gabriel to Daniel begins with these words. Seventy weeks or seventy periods of seven have been decreed for your people and your holy city. Now, Daniel's been crying out to the Lord on behalf of his people, on behalf of the holy city, and on behalf of the temple. And, and Gabriel says to him, 70 periods of seven have been decreed for your people and your holy city. This prophecy is a prophecy of the coming Messiah, the messianic kingdom, and the end for this people, the holy city, and the temple. Verse 24 gives us the overall timing, 490 years, 70 times 7. And verse 24 gives us the nature of the kingdom, the six things that will occur with the coming of Messiah. Now verse 25 helps us determine when the 490 years begins. Now think through this timing issue. Let's say that Daniel was 10 to 12 years old when he was taken captive in 605 BC. And that he realizes that the Babylonian captivity is going to last for 70 years. And he's been there for about 70 years. He's, he's in his room. He's, he's praying. He's, he's reading through the scriptures. And all of a sudden, he receives the revelation from Jeremiah that this is going to be a 70-year captivity. And it, it dawns on him, we're going home. We've been here for almost 70 years, and that's when he begins to pray and cry out and confess the sins of the people. Now, that puts us somewhere around 535 to 538 B.C. So when the 490 years begins is critical to understanding this prophecy. Verse 25 says, So you are to know and discern that from the issuing of a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It, the city of Jerusalem, will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Jerusalem will be rebuilt. That is the promise that's made to Daniel by Gabriel. But the 490-year timeline until Messiah the Prince will begin at the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem. Now, you can read numerous commentaries. I, I've studied this for 35 years. You can read numerous commentaries on this date and and there's, you know, when does it start? What is the beginning of the 490 years? If we believe the text, and, and by the way, there is no real consensus. If we believe the text and let the text of Scripture be our guide, it really isn't complicated. Seven weeks, that's seven times seven, would equal 49 years. And 62 weeks 
Seven times 62 equals 434 years, and combining those together would make 483 years. The decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem is found in Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. And it says it occurs in the 20th year of Artaxerxes. Now, Artaxerxes began his reign in 474 B.C. So the 20th year of his reign would take us to 454 B.C. And if we add 483 years to 454 B.C., that takes us to 29 A.D., the year of Jesus' baptism and the launch of his public ministry. Now, for a deeper understanding of how all this fits together and the timelines and the, and the tables and the arithmetic and charts, that get us to this date, I really recommend, and this is a great book, Dallas Burdett's Commentary on Daniel, An Unraveling of God's Messianic Kingdom. Now, the text then states that after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. The prophecy of Daniel takes us from the decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem the decree occurs in 454 B.C. to the public ministry of Messiah, the prince, 483 years later. The baptism, the launch of the public ministry, the appearance of Messiah. Perfectly fitting the biblical chronology of Jesus being 30 years of age at the beginning of his ministry, with his birth being in 2 B.C., during the 42nd year of Augustus. Now, with 483 years taking us up to the beginning of his public ministry, his public ministry lasts three and a half years, and then the crucifixion comes in the middle of the 70th week. Now, Jesus came at the precise moment in history in the precise manner as was prophesied, fulfilling every prophecy, he brought in the long-promised messianic kingdom. He forgave sin. He brought salvation. He opened the door to the Father for all people everywhere so that whoever receives him may become children of God, both Jew and Gentile. Now, We're going to continue with our study of the Messianic prophecy of Daniel tomorrow morning. And we'll begin to focus on the nature of the Messianic kingdom as it was presented by Gabriel to Daniel. Now, I hope, I really hope this has spurred you to wrestle with the scriptures, to think about why you believe what you've always believed. And I hope you'll be with me again right here tomorrow morning as we continue our study of the messianic kingdom and its fulfillment in Jesus, the promised Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the whole world. Why not click on the subscribe button on the lower right corner of your screen and you'll be notified in YouTube whenever a new video gets posted. And if you're watching on Facebook, I really hope you'll consider sharing this on your wall and invite your friends to watch it. I hope you go out and make today a great day.